Well, thank you both for coming on this live broadcast. We have Yarif Goldman and also Jonathan uh, Philistine uh, from um, Genesis 123 uh, Foundation. Um, and uh, I'm grateful for you guys carving out of your time to come on. First of all, let's start with you, Jonathan. What is your take on uh, um, the attack? What is the situation right now in Israel? I think the situation, first of all, the t my take on the attack is it's quite unprecedented. And uh, th first of all, thank God, if you ever need a witness of God's uh, protection of Israel, the fact that they fired 300 rockets and I think only two landed in two or three landed in Israeli territory. Um, one one young girl was injured. Um, very very little other damage. This is all quite uh, dramatic and impressive. But the other side is that uh, things are tense. Uh, schools are still called off for tomorrow. Um, it creates a lot of havoc here and. Nobody knows, is there going to be an Israeli response? Are the Iranians going to ratchet it up even more? Will Hezbollah decide to step in with 150 to 300,000 uh, rockets and missiles that they have? Um, yeah, there we go. So it's a, it's a lot of tension, but um, we're still putting our faith in the one who's protecting us. Absolutely. And, and Yarib, you are uh, not too far. How far are you from um, where the attack has happened or, or where... Is um is all this going on? Uh, the missiles were pretty much in, in various locations, so we also had some some uh, flying over our heads here. Uh, but yeah, there, there were no real explosions felt uh, in the area. In in, oh, yeah. in past in in past wars, we 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 felt a lot. Uh, past times, we felt a lot, uh, especially up north. But uh, now, not so much. Yes, maybe maybe it's to do with the the large concentration, large Arabic concentration, with whom uh, we are surrounded. Could be. And I want to take into uh, to the history of it, how it's all started. It was back in Hamas, first of all, firing missiles over um, Israel back in October, uh, I think, twenty twenty three. And it's been over six months now. Uh, still, that's been now es escalated to a new thing now. So because. Um, Israel went into, I think, Rafa city and, um, and, uh, there is so far like <clears throat> on the, on, on the Palestine side is 33,000, over 33,000 people been killed on the Israel sites. I think it's close to 1100 people killed. Is that correct? Well, the Palestinian numbers that you're referring to are based on Hamas and there's no proof of any of the numbers and they're conflating <coughs> the number of terrorists killed even the number of terrorists who were killed in Israel in what in the number that they've presented. And, and we don't know for sure uh, if it's 33,000 or if it's 23,000. But Israel I Israel's reported, if I'm not mistaken, tw uh, 11 or 12,000 terrorists mm. um, have been killed. And as far as is on the Israeli side, we have uh, 1,200 killed that day, 133 who are still uh, hostage, probably half of whom at least are, are dead. And uh, and another 260 soldiers who have been injured, <clears throat> along along in addition to casualties on the Lebanese border and elsewhere. So I, I do do the math, and we're 1,500 to 2,000 somewhere. Yes, um, I, I, I also I think that uh, basically the numbers is not something we should focus because it's not numbers versus versus numbers. It's a matter of principle, uh, and it's really important to to express the fact that we know there's valid and real suffering on the Palestinian uh, on side, on the people of Gaza. People do die. But the big difference is that uh, the uh, Hamas or attacks generated from the Palestinians are meant to uh, harm civilians, are meant yeah. to scare, harm, and uh, get as many civilians as possible. While the counter attacks or the actions of the IDF inside Gaza, having served in the IDF my, myself, are always to target as much as possible only the hostiles, only the terrorists, and minimize to a uh, crazy extent as much as possible and beyond the harm of civilians. So that's, that's so you can't compare numbers with numbers. Yeah. The numbers on the Palestinian side are because their people, uh, the, the terrorists, are working from within civilian population specifically to increase the harm to their own civilian population 
and and they also uh, funny enough or not funny sad they use these occasions for uh, uh wars and power grabbing within themselves killing many of their, their own gang style uh, people who uh, fight for medication for food for money money transfer money laundering um drugs and when they kill them they blame israel on that so you can't just compare numbers with numbers yeah. you have to talk about the essence yes i want to also uh, i want you to unfold that when i was in israel with you you brought a very interesting fact that there was a seven day war <clears> i think <throat> happened where all the nations come against uh, israel like the surrounding nation Yarif, comment on that, and they end up losing more land uh, to, uh, you know, like uh, Arab people lost more lands in Israel where gained the land, you know. And uh, I feel like that was the ambitions when uh, Hamas started it, right? And then also it's uh, right now in America, there is a, uh, all the big large churches, very prominent ministers are talking about they found four red heifers that they brought to Israelites. Can you comment on that? Do, do you know something like that? Yes, shall I comment on both of the things you mentioned? Yes. Do you know red okay. heifers? Red heifers, yeah, anything yeah. with the sacrifice of the red heifers? Sure. sure, sure. Yeah, so my view is most probably not going to be popular. It, it's, uh, it's a hardly popular view on uh, on many topics. I'm not your, your mainstream, so yeah. I hope I'm not going to be offending any people. But yeah, the first thing that you mentioned, Six Day War, and most of the other uh, wars that we had here in modern day uh, Israel were uh, when we were uh, usually abiding by international law, which I'm not sure we should have always, but we were being attacked uh, by the nations surrounding us as they declare, proclaim, write clearly uh, on the all of their agendas is that they want Israel to be quote unquote free from the river to the sea, meaning no Jews basically whatsoever anywhere in Israel. Once Waqf land, always Waqf land, uh, once it belonged to uh, the Muslim Waqf, it should always stay uh, within the Muslim Waqf. And so they couldn't take any international uh, agreements that gave any portion of land as small as it was to the Jewish people. So they kept on fighting against that brutally. And Malasat, what can we do? We, we won. And at several occasions, we tried to give them back the uh, what is termed as the Palestinians. They didn't want them, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, it was. Uh, in in my mind, there are greater, uh, let's say, powers playing to perpetuate the suffering of the Palestinian people to create a constant pressure against Israel uh, politically. For I, yeah, it's too much. We can't open this up now. But uh, yeah, this is about. Uh, that we regained uh, after being attacked, we 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 conquered uh, more, but that more was always ours. It was yeah. originally ours, and so uh, <clears throat> basically we kept on saying we are for peace. I grew up as a child in school singing songs about peace. If you knew how many roads or commercial centers in Israel are called something something Hashalom, the Hashalom, the road of peace, the center for peace, the the uh, the museum of tolerance and peace it's all over the land you just need to travel through the land and see that you don't see that anywhere anywhere i'm saying anywhere in any of the palestinian cities that just shows you uh, that we meant for peace uh but sadly the other side is not although there are many people not the government many people on the other side who would love peace but their mm -hmm. leaders are not allowing this uh, sadly and regarding uh, the red heifer um yeah, this is progressing big time. I don't know what will happen. I know what I read in the scripture, and there's many debates, dialogues. I went back and forth, changing my mind through the years. But there are definitely people who are serious about reinstating the sacrifices <coughs> somewhere on around Temple Mount. And uh, if I understand the scripture together uh, correctly, um, this will happen at one point. Uh, this is very explosive. And um, yeah, this the, we, we don't know exactly where this will go. For me, bottom line, it will lead to an in internationalization of the conflict that in my, again, it's, it's up for debate, but in my book, it seems like uh, will usher in um, uh, kind of a almost global regime that will uh, seek control of the area 
um, and that's basically kingdom of uh, or not kingdom rule of antichrist. But we're we're not there uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. We're not there. Uh, we have some some time before. Yes, uh, Jonathan, I want to bring you in um, on on the the same comments on the red heifer because. Um, it's very popular belief here in America what happened actually because when <coughs> Mas found out that they just brought four red heifer from the Texas uh, to Israel and Israel enemy knows when you know because they, these red heifers are very rare and that could be a sign uh, of third temple is being built in um, uh, Israel. Right. So first of all, I would say that uh, share that I was at the airport the day that the red heifers arrived. I uh, was just invited to be present. It was interesting. I always I did a, a, a couple of articles about it. I recorded one of my podcasts for the Inspiration from Zion podcast series about that. And I, will, I always tell people that I was overwhelmed at how overwhelmed I was by being there. Mm. I'm, I'm not the kind of person who says, well, red heifers landed and therefore the temple's being rebuilt. But uh, what I explained to people is that in order for uh, temple rituals to continue, to be able to bring offerings, to present offerings in the temple as part of worship, <coughs> you have to be ritually pure. And there's a, a, an unusual uh, biblical um, uh, formula that you need the ashes of a red heifer mixed with water to, to purify, to make yourself ritually pure. So where we stand, the, the red heifers, as far as I know, they're all still eligible. They're about two years old. I don't know at what point, if any, they age out. They can no longer be sacrificed. They do. It's, it, it's important to say that these are not sacrifices as in bringing an offering to the temple. They're simply sacrificed to use the ashes to mix with water to make people Correct. pure. And so what we, what we are is a step closer. We're, we're a step closer, if and when that happens, to be able to have the ashes from one or maybe even two. And if I remember correctly, that the ashes from one, of course, the population was much smaller then, would last for a century or, or, or something in that area. So okay. we're, 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 seeing, we're seeing signs, we're seeing milestones, we're seeing things happening does that mean that the temple is coming back and 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 ritual sacrifice is being brought back tomorrow? I wouldn't say that. I just know that we're we we have this potentially one impediment out of the way. Yeah, um, makes sense. But it's now uh, let's let's talk about now the Iran's attack. What is Israel's response? First of all, that uh, Biden is saying like, hey, let's find some diplomatic uh, response. And um, do you think that's going to turn into a World War III? Uh, Jonathan, this is for you. Well, I can't project World War III yeah. or not. I, I do think that we need to respond very forcefully with yeah. Iran. What Biden has said is that he does not, he, he will not, the U.S. will not participate and he will not support in a retaliation uh, against Iran. And I wrote an article that's coming out tomorrow morning in townhall.com. Uh, where I'm calling the the, the administration uh, arsonists who are trying to put out a fire that they started while pretending that they didn't start the fire. Because the truth of the matter mm. is, if if the administration hadn't pandered to the to the Iranians all these years, if they hadn't released in November ten billion dollars, if they mm. hadn't voted against Israel in the UN just a few weeks ago, if they hadn't been threatening to withhold weapons and and other kind of support the terrorist leaders in iran all the way down to hezbollah and hamas and the houthis and anywhere else they are would not have had a sense that they could be as bold as they were yesterday and and i i, I i'm an american citizen i'm a proud american citizen i love the united states but i'm disappointed that the government has uh has really made made the problem here worse albeit that the government and I will give it credit, participated yesterday, provided weapons, provided intelligence. Thank God for that. But honestly, what needs to happen is the Iranians need to be taken on and the Iranians need to be blown back into the fourth century. So no one will ever, uh, and I'm not a militaristic person. I'm not a crazy radical guy, but, yeah. but this is how I see it. Because the only way, the only way to defeat this radical Islam is by defeating it. 
Um, you know, like, you, you, of course, in order for that attack to carry on, the United States um, <coughs> and the U U.S. and Israel, all the allies got to come together. But I want to bring um, uh, Yarif back. Uh, I, I was reading online that Israel cabinet is got together, forming a plan where what Jonathan says is that some big response has to uh, has to form to um, teach Iran's lesson that uh, don't shoot rockets, because that was the very first time Iran launched over 300 rockets, missiles uh, over over a sovereign country. Okay, yeah. So uh, your question about this is, uh, could you clarify the question? That um, Israel cabinets is gathered together and they're ready for mm -hmm. response. So what do you think sure. the response could be? Yeah. Uh, I definitely don't know. I know that the the, the game is basically like uh, more like arm arm wrestling uh you have to uh there's no choice even if you don't want to you rather have to respond with a little bit more strength than your opponent how much more uh even if you don't want to escalate to an all out war you can't let your your opponent take your hand almost all the way down mm -hmm. so kind of imagine arm wrestling you have to exert force um yeah even if you are intending to keep the status quo and it needs to match and exceed a little bit the one uh of your opponent so definitely there's going to be a response um yeah um, f for me though it, it's it's very simplistic the way people are talking about it and um and uh, uh jonathan said the only way to defeat um islam is to defeat it and sadly, I don't see it uh, on a on a global scale that would lower the flames happening. Um, but yeah, one must do what one must do to protect our own house. Um, as um, yeah, I see societal change empowered by the gospel as uh, the only chance for uh, seeing a slowdown in uh, in Islam taking over. Um, and uh, that's that's my yeah that's my main uh, my, my main business uh, in that respect or the, the main thing I see will take a, take an effect um, because you can't just go around sending uh, whole nations with millions of people to the fourth century uh, especially that um, seventy or eighty percent of the population actually loves Israel and would rather uh, and and would support Israel and do support Israel. Um, yeah, you can't, you know, it, it's not realistic. It's not going to happen. Okay. Uh, your response, um, uh, Jonathan? Definitely point noted. I, when I say fourth century, I don't mean in terms of slaughtering the people. I'm, I'm talking about in terms of bring, uh, breaking their capability and, and breaking their will. I was in touch with somebody today that my hope is whatever response there is, that will give wind to the to the, in the sail to the millions and millions of Iranian people who want regime change, who, who are fed up yeah. with forty five years of this Islamic regime, who have kidnapped and hijacked their own country. It's not good for them, and I think that and and, and I wish that the U.S. would be party to that. Uh, we do what, what fourth century may have been rhetoric uh, statement. I will backtrack from that, but I think there needs to be a firm response, harsh response. Uh, we can't be pandering. We can't be, um, uh, it, 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 we can't be um, enabling the terrorists by allowing them to do Definitely. whatever they want. Definitely. 100%. 100%. Yeah. One of the reasons I don't suppose this will happen now is because uh, definitely I know that if the uh, United States wanted the Iranian regime to be off, they would be off. They would be removed completely. Bradley. The reason they're not removed completely is because they don't want them to be removed. And so uh, Hamas could have been removed, but it was convenient for a long time. And uh, this is uh, an evil balance kept by international forces for much greater purposes than just what happens even here, even in the Holy Land, uh, even on Temple Mount. At one time, it will reach here. But right now, many other things are being done that are horrible globally. And uh, but we are the center. We are the uh, the uh, tabul kolal. It's the prophet said. Uh, uh, how do you say it? The, 
not the belly button, sorry for my English. The, uh, yeah, the tabu, the center of the whole earth. <laughs> There's yeah, a word in English for that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, yeah, definitely whenever they say, whenever someone sneezes here, everybody in the world knows and hears about this, although atrocities and genocides are happening across the globe every day and the world is silent, not because they don't know, but because it's convenient. And when someone does anything in Israel, it would pass uh, things that were done uh, by uh, United States leaders that are uh, atrocities. But when they're done in Israel, they're, they have the limelight on them and everybody talks about them. Why? There's spiritual dynamics behind this. And so I don't believe the response is going to crush the, the, the leaders, the regime in Iran right now. Um, yeah, that, so, I could be wrong. Could be wrong. So elections are coming close and I want to get your take on that. You know, Biden relationship to Israel is a little bit different <clears throat> than the Trump relationship to Israel. So what do you think between both? You know, who been the best president for the uh, nation of Israel, Biden or Trump? <laughs> Let Jonathan answer that. <laughs> Look, um, Trump has, Biden has a strong pro-Israel record, and I won't deny that. Biden's administration now has been wishy-washy at best. When they speak of a two-state solution, I wrote about this recently, they're speaking of not Israel and Palestine, they're speaking of Michigan and Minnesota, because they're def <laughs> definitely afraid of losing the electoral votes in those two states. And when you have a Bobby Kennedy who's a who's running as an independent, who's coming out as a very strong pro-Israel advocate, unequivocally, he's going to peel off votes. Michigan and Minnesota, I, I did an interview with someone earlier today, and I said, Michigan and Minnesota, the people who are the Hamas wing of the Democratic Party, are not going to vote for Joe Biden unless he declares war on Israel. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if he's, by going in and helping to, to knock down the weapons from Iran, is bad for them. Now he's got to pivot in order to get them back. And so he'll, he'll he's going to say, no, we're not going to support any, any attack on Iran or, or, or something further. Or, or we, today, they're meeting in the Security Council. We don't know what's going to be with that. But unless Biden, I, I think he's campaigning wrong. I think he's campaigning very wrong. He should be campaigning to the center and he should be campaigning ethnic, ethically and morally and supporting Israel unequivocally and making that the, uh, the, the, the um, backbone of the Democratic Party. At least for now, while he's in, while he's in the driver's seat, but sadly he's not. Yeah, Timothy just said that he said Biden is a traitor. Uh, that's people people. That's that's the beauty of uh, beauty of uh, America is being a free country. You can criticize, but um, I want to uh, Yarif. I think are you trying not to um, response on that, or what is your take on? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't you don't want me starting on Israeli politics or American yeah. politics because yeah. uh, I'm I'm on the I'm on a fringe group uh, that have an opinion that uh, both the uh, right and the left are the you know two wings of the same ugly bird. So uh, yeah, and I'm very adamant about that. Edmund, yes. So I'm, I'm I want to I want to focus on uh, uh, the the kingdom of God coming. It'll be better, and it's easier on the ears of your your hearers. I don't want to freak anybody Absolutely. out. Absolutely. How can <laughs> how can Christian? I know you love Christian. Um, uh, your daughter actually took me to a, a Christian church while I was in Israel. So how can Christian better support Israel? And what is actually uh, the situation is happening on uh, Middle East <clears throat> table, and uh, what Christian can do in churches, and uh, what was what will be your deeply urge? Okay, there's two parts. One that is uh, practical, uh, this uh, everyday level practical, and one that is, I would call spiritual, but I still feel is very practical. And I'm, I'm gonna risk sounding, you know, this, I, I didn't expect this kind of a forum, uh, but uh, I'm gonna risk sounding over spiritual. But I'll start with the practical. It's very important <clears throat> that truth be told and declared. It's very important to do hasbara, what we call online, and uh, it's very important with, it's basically Israel apologetics, kind of like biblical apologetics. And you explain the validity of, of why the people of Israel need to live in the, uh, the land of Israel right now and uh, explaining uh, the, the truth and to contradict the lies, the propaganda machine uh, financed with uh, lots of money uh, from overseas. 
uh, that is targeted against Israel. That's very important uh, to know uh, the, the history and know how to be able to give a response, you know, ap apologia, really, but in this respect. So Christians are very um, capable of doing this and they should, they should speak up the truth. That's, that's the one part. And um, just even Israelis knowing that we have people standing with us and praying for us is amazing, is comforting. Uh, I can tell you that for sure. Um, yeah, that's part one. Part two uh, is where I'm going to uh, risk sounding over spiritual uh, is uh, not only pray and intercede, but I really believe that um, praying specifically that our people will repent as a nation. I speak to my people, Israel, all the time. And whenever throughout history we said it was us, it was the IDF, well, there was no IDF. It was our strength, our sword. Uh, we were crushed. Throughout history, whenever we were proud, we were crushed. Whenever we humbled ourselves, God gave us the victory. Just because we have television and internet and we have Christian Zionism now doesn't mean God changed. God never changed. Mm. His principles are the same. The fact that we are in the land, I know many Christians around the world say this is an amazing miracle, and it is. And uh, it's shocking to them sometimes to find out that God used flawed people to do that. Wow. And it is, but that's all through the scripture. But the, the issue is that the fact that we are here doesn't mean we are a holy, upright nation. It's all in the blessings in the, uh, of God for taking the land. We're always conditional. And so we are doing atrocities. I'm not talking about the Palestinians for our own people. When you read the prophets, Amos, Hosea, you can see God judging us for little minutia things that he judged the nation similarly for much more difficult things. And he says, you only have I known from all the families of the earth, which is a romantic statement, second part of the verse, therefore I need to visit all of your iniquities. Too much, too much was given from which much will be required. And there's a Christian narrative that says Israel will definitely win. And they misquote so many biblical passages as if, they are like a, like, a, like a button that you press and it's going to happen. They take them out of context. And so one thing that Christians can do is pray that my people, Israel, me, starting with me, we will come to national repentance and crying out to God, not boasting in our Chetz 3 system or that system or the other, but crying out to God that he will have mercy and he will be our defense. And I believe this will lead to spiritual awakening, a revival, and a turning to the Messiah, the Savior of both Israel and the world. Wow, that is phenomenal what you just mentioned right there. And, and Jonathan, um, you have your foundation, Genesis 1 to 3, I think is also a great bridge builder between Jew and Christian. That's your vision. So how can <coughs> Christian uh, and the Jews can come along and fight off terror? Right. That's exactly the vision to build bridges between Jews and Christians. I invite anyone to check out the website, genesis123.co. We have not posted it yet. I, I will echo what was just said. Prayer is the first. Prayer is God's currency. Prayer is something that you can do at home in your pajamas. You can do in your car. You can do you, we, we can and in any language and it doesn't cost any money. And, I, and I, it, I've been so blessed by all of the people reaching out to me since uh, 20 six hours ago when we were sitting at home waiting for the attack to take yeah. place from all over the world praying okay. uh by the way it's not on our website yet but we are hosting a global day of prayer for israel on may 15th beginning at 7 p.m israel time going all night ending in late afternoon in the u.s and i invite people again to go to genesis 123.co to be part of that um, i would also say another way to connect another way to participate is to donate and there are a lot a lot of, oh thank you for pulling up the website that means a lot um our israel emergency campaign you know there are many ways to give and i'm not saying only give to us but i will tell you this because because of how i manage things we give we do things with the greatest integrity with the biggest impact possible and um not not now this is not meant to be a commercial about what we're doing but we're doing some really great things and would love to have people to uh to participate but join us in the prayer uh pray and 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 what yariv just said um and i think i think in order to pray properly you need to be correctly informed you need to be what to know about what you're praying for it's not yeah it's not rocket science i guess pun intended 
um, as we're watching the, the the scenes of rockets coming in last night. It's not rocket mm -hmm. science. What's going on here? It's it, it's pretty black and white, but there's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of noise, and people do need to be educated, not, need to ask questions, and when they know the answers, declare them, stand up, and and make sure that other people uh, don't get away with lies. Yes, absolutely. You know the biggest lie right now is is being sold here in the United States, and anything like happened in the United States, you know, it affects the whole world. Uh, right now, there is even liberals, some of the uh, part of the party, you know, I don't want to name the party, but l really anti-Semitism is growing more and more. People need to understand that Israel is the strongest ally uh, of United States in the Middle East uh, than any other country over there, um, some other as well. But the Israel is a longstanding uh, allies of the United States and also is a gateway, I feel like, for the Middle East to enter into a Western world because a lot of people all over the world, Islam, Christians, Jew, call Israel their home, holy land, home place, right? So that's awesome. Um, <coughs> Brother Yari, anything that you're doing that we forget to talk about, anything you want to contribute to it as our audience is growing before we cut that mm -hmm. out feed? Um, anything uh, I forgot to ask you? Sure. Well, our main thing here in the land is disciple making, but obviously we have a charity as well, and yeah. we do humanitarian aid. Uh, we What's started off. Charity? It's Hands of Mercy, Hands of Mercy Israel, okay. uh, and so we do. We support um, uh, soldiers, we support civilians, and uh, we want to do much more. And we actually have. Uh, we've been involved in reaching out to disaster areas as Israelis, as Messianics, and other parts of the world. When disaster comes, not only the official government uh, delegations, but we also have Messianic Jewish delegations and because we're called to be light uh, to this world. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I, I would not like to post a website or anything like this uh, yeah. right now, but people through you can contact if they want to. But mainly we need prayer because we're dealing with, uh, uh, with a need for the prophetic voice to come back to Israel. And I can't overemphasize that. And the prophetic voice is not it's kind of like joshua are you with us or with our adversaries and the answer was law no and that wasn't a yes or no question but for him it was it's, the question was are you aligned with god and the prophetic does weird things and it still does and it did you could have elisha can you imagine this you know i might shock some shock. I, I like shocking people but i'm not doing this for the shock but elisha had to go and anoint hazael king of assyria weeping and crying because he saw prophetically what that man will go ahead and do to Israel. And, uh, but he needed to do that. And that man said, no, I'm never going to do these horrible things to Israel, which he later on did. So um, the end result is for Israel to worship the Lord. And God mm -hmm. wants to do that with the least amount of pain and suffering possible, not uh, overpowering our free will and um, taking all things into consideration. So I want the church and the believers to pray and intercede that the spirit of prophecy, the true men and women of God, will rise up and will be able to speak truth to power with an authority, with upright, holy lives, and really make a spiritual effect in the land. And they will be very practical as well because the spirit of God is very practical and it's going to lead them in business, in government, etc. But yeah, so mainly for us prayers, if anybody feels this resonates with them, they're welcome to through you. Contact us. I have much more to say. But actually, some of these things I cannot share so publicly online. So Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I know you're a private person, but your success makes a lot of noise. You know, before you know, Yara could be sitting in Germany or he'd be sitting in America, right? And nobody knows like, hey, where did I thought Yara was <coughs> in? So you'd get to travel a lot. And uh, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, last question uh, before you uh, go, will Israel uh, retaliate? Yes. Nothing. Yeah, they have to they have to the arm wrestling thing that I told you. You have yeah. to. You you cannot in arm wrestling you can't wait uh for your opponent. We have to retaliate because as Yariv says, it's it's the it's strategy. We have to retaliate because we have a government and and and, and the government is uh, demanding that and the people are demanding that. And uh we, and if we don't then you let them uh do thinking that Israel is weak, right? That Israel sure. uh, right. That's sure. what the message and sends by out. By the way, it's also important to know that that the Arabs, the Sunni Arab countries, 
um, who are not at war with us, who are not uh, proxies of uh, of Iran, are looking at us as well in order to do this. They want to know that at least Israel is going to be reliable if they go in with Israel and and make peace. And sure. uh, right, this is it's critical, if, especially if the United yeah. States is not necessarily going to be reliable. They're looking to us. Mm. Yeah, def def I've lived one year in Dubai, and yeah, that they are they, they have a lot to say about this. They have their own. Uh, strong opinions, and they are looking to us at what we will do in so many ways, negative and positive. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for both of you coming on this broadcast. I don't take your time for granted, but I'm super uh, excited that both of you are doing phenomenal things uh, uh, for the nation of Israel. And also, you guys are definitely close friend of mine. I appreciate both of you. And uh, those Thank of you, you uh, who are wondering, hey, how we can get connect, if anybody wants to get connected with Yarif and supports Hands of Mercy, uh, the mission that they've taken out to support um, in Israel uh, people and also IDF, you mentioned, right, uh, Yarif? You guys? <laughs> also, support, yeah. Yeah, support. So please feel free to uh, contact me. I can uh, bring you on uh, in connection with uh, Yarif. And also, same for Genesis123. Uh, uh, foundation uh, although now um jonathan have a great great connections here in the united states i mean he, him and i rub shoulders in the in the conferences and all all that so anybody wants to connect with e either one of them please let me know i will be very happy to connect you but thank you so much uh for coming on this live broadcast continue sharing thank you adnan so more and more people can get the live feed, not just like uh, mediocre news on uh, other channels, but this is authentic. That's directly coming from Israel without any agenda. Thank, Thank you so much. much.